Well, I'm here in LA and I just can't believe I decided to have a marathon of interviews and also doing television. So for our audience on YouTube and all over the world and different stations, plus our radio audience, it's a simulcast. And to start out, I thought, wow, let's go international. And that's what I, I can't wait to go international and hopefully go to visit London. And that's a shout out to my buddy, John Hicks. So thanks for coming by the makeshift studios in LA. My pleasure. Uh, Phil, uh, Phil Pritchard. And I'm really excited to talk to you about Backbeat. And also for our audience, kind of tell you your acting background and then we'll go from there. Sure. Uh, well, I'm a British actor and I've been working steadily in the UK and I got the opportunity to come out to, first of all, uh, Toronto in Canada with the show Backbeat, which is about the early days of the Beatles. Um, and having done it in Toronto, some people from the Amundsen Theatre here in L.A. Uh, came to see the show. And we were invited here for a six-week run uh, January through March, uh, which we've just completed. Uh, it's, been, it's been amazing. And uh, the audiences have been fantastic here in L.A., and it, it, the show is kind of about the, the part of the Beatles that, that you don't know. It's the, Which it's, I'm very interested in. Yeah, it's before they became mega famous when they played nightclubs in Hamburg in Germany for about two years. And they were playing eight hours a night oh, uh, without a break for, for that time. And they, they really believe now that's, that experience is what moulded their current oh. style or the style that they became famous for. Yeah. So that, that's fantastic. And I want to know kind of how you got involved in this. But then I want to go into just the, your character and also the whole fact to go back. It reminds me of days when I was a professional wrestler and I was trying to break in to make sure I go to the WWF. And I would play all the small towns that's and all right. the different things. And you wouldn't think the Beatles that would happen to. You wouldn't. But in, in that time, in the late 50s, a lot of bands from Liverpool were sent over to Germany, so, uh, spe uh, specifically to Hamburg, to just earn money in, on the Reeperbahn, which is effectively the red light district of Hamburg. Uh, not a lot of people know that, that, that those sort of low, seedy bars and, 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 and places like that were, was where the Beatles were born. You know, it's kind of a, a weird dichotomy, but, but it's true. <laughs> so tell me how you got involved in this project. How did it start? Uh, I, I, I simply auditioned. The show started in Glasgow in Scotland um, about two and a half years ago. And uh, that, uh, the, the show went through some, some changes before it went to the West End uh, okay. in London. And then after a sort of five, six month run there, it was invited to Canada. Uh, and then there was a few cast changes. I think some people were unavailable due to other commitments. And then I was invited to audition just for the uh, Toronto, the Canada production. And uh, as a result of that, I got, I got to go to L.A., which has, been, which has been amazing, a kind of a dream, actually. So, yeah. So w once you read the script, yeah. were you blown away? You learned so much, probably. Yeah, because it, it, it's, not, it's about the Beatles, but it's also about art. Um, the, what a lot of people don't know is that the Beatles had a, a fifth member um, back really? then. His wow. name was Stuart Sutcliffe, and he was an artist. And he went to Liverpool Art College, and uh, he was their bass player. And uh, they also had a different drummer, a guy called Pete Best. Um, and so there were five of them. They went to Hamburg. They played all the clubs. And Stuart, who was an artist, uh, he studied with John Lennon in Liverpool, okay. decided to take up art again when he was in Germany. So he left the band. Uh, and then they became a, a four-piece band. And then that's when uh, Paul McCartney started playing bass instead of Stuart. Because Paul McCartney's known for playing the bass. Uh, so Paul plays bass, Pete's still on drums. Right. Then when they came back to England, uh, they started working with George Martin, started recording Love Me Do and all oh, of that. Wow. Then they changed their drummer, and then they brought in Ringo Starr. So actually the drummer that was with them at the beginning was a guy called Pete Best, and it's a, there's a little bit of his story uh, in the show as well, but it's mainly about Stuart Sutcliffe, his German lover, and John Lennon. It's that sort of three... No, no. What's three. really interesting is there was somebody behind making the Beatles who they are today, right? That's there, right. There, there's always somebody who creates a star. Yes. It's, it's not just developed through that, some talent. Sometimes talent, but then you've got to have the right marketing. Yeah, and they, in fact, the Beatles themselves, I think probably, I think it was Paul McCartney said that the real fifth Beatle uh, was Brian Epstein, um, who was their manager. He actually sort of heard one of their singles, which they'd recorded in, in Hamburg. He heard it, or people were asking for it in Liverpool, and he couldn't find it. So he went down to the Cavern Club, and there's a scene in, in the show about this, and says, people are asking for your record, but I can't find it. 
Uh, and that's how he discovered the Beatles. He said, look, I'll be your manager. I'll look after the look, the style. I won't touch, interfere with the music. That's all your, your domain. And that's when their relationship was formed. And really, it's through his management of the Beatles that they became so successful. So tell me a little bit about your part in this. Yeah, I play a guy called Arthur Ballard, who is a, is a real character. He was an artist and the head art teacher at Liverpool Art College. Okay. So he taught both John Lennon and Stuart Sutcliffe huh. uh, how to draw, how to appreciate art. And um, John Lennon was a year below Stuart Sutcliffe, okay. but he was always dragging him off to do gigs and play the bass. Oh. Uh, Arthur Ballard was trying to get him to become a, a fine artist okay, because he okay. had enough talent to sell and become a, a very famous artist, but Lennon uh, got in the way, really. So um, oh, that's, there's, that's a, wow. there's a bit of tension about And what happens is he, spends, he sells a painting okay. at a very prestigious art exhibition and spends the money on a base uh, instead and leaves college to go that's, to Hamburg. That, that, so that's, that's really wild. So in the character, did you have to do a lot of research to find out? And yeah. All it, what, what, how, what type of research did you do? Yeah, well, I mean, Arthur Ballard, he's, there's not a lot of information about him, but I managed to find one a biography uh, which has some of his paintings mm -hmm. in them. And he himself was quite a celebrated artist. And some of his paintings you can see, there was, the, the style at the time was called Abstract Expressionism. Okay. Um, right. which is sort of you look, you're looking at things coming out of the Jackson Pollock's mm -hmm. era, that kind of stuff. Um, and he was very influential on not just John Lennon and Stuart Sutcliffe, but a whole raft of artists from that period. Uh, so he's a very interesting man. He also fought in the Second World War. So how did the, the person who wrote this find yes. out about Arthur's involvement in the whole thing? Um, well, it was the, 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 the show is based on a film... Uh, which was researched and directed by Ian Softley, okay. uh, the film of Backbeat. Um, and then the stage show was, was continued to be worked on by Ian, but also Stephen Jeffries, the playwright, okay. um, who wrote the film The Libertine okay. uh, with Johnny Depp. Um, so they sort of came together in a theatre environment to change that story to make it more uh, palatable for the stage. And that's the version that you see now. Quite and, I, and I know that uh, I know that Stephen is and both and uh, Ian are absolute experts on Beatles history. If you, you ask them anything about any character at any date, and they'll know everything. So by doing the performance, how many Beatles fans flocked to this? Because you know yeah. they, they have a cult following. Even though they were great, one of the greatest bands of all time, yes. there are still people that just live Beatles. 24-7. That's right. Um, even, even younger people who weren't around then. I, we right, were watching exactly, some yeah. of the tweets after the shows. You know, people tweet after the show and they, they post pictures of the Beatles. And, and some of them are, are still very young, in their 20s, you know. Um, but a lot of the audience actually remember that era. The Beatles played in Los Angeles. and They actually stayed at the Biltmore. Okay. And it was so, there were so many people to see them that they couldn't bring them through the front entrance. They had to land them on the roof with, oh, a, wow. with a helicopter. And this was in the, in the 60s. So the sto did the story ever get to that point in this, in this, in this play? No, it, no. no. The story where, where it, finishes just as they record Twist and Shout, which is the last song on their first album. So when you get to talk to the audience afterwards, I'm sure there's meets and greets and stuff yeah. like that. Were they just absolutely surprised what the Beatles had to go through to get to make it? I, or yeah. what was there? Because you have a variety of an audience. You probably have 20 year olds to 60 year olds. That's right. That yeah. attend this. Yeah, I think they were. I mean, you know, if you're, we're all. Uh, I think most of us are Beatles fans right, in, a small, exactly. in a small way. But then when you look at the actual facts and you realise that they had to go through this before they became famous, it's quite shocking in some ways. Uh, the way they were treated, actually, in, in the clubs, uh, the way they were made to work so long, they actually slept on a floor behind a cinema screen. They didn't even have it, individual rooms. They slept in one room. Yeah, I slept on the floor when I was a wrestler, too. Yeah, well, so they, I know the whole, I know, there you are. I know the whole story. I would be in a town, yeah. sometimes sleep in my van. You know, when A lot of people that try to make it in this industry that people have to understand is it's not you just become a star overnight. Yeah. It's, it's a process. And, Everyone goes through it. And it's very interesting to hear... I guess a, a international perspective of yeah. something, and and also there's a scene in in the show where they're sleeping behind the screen, 
So the, the black and white film is playing behind them oh, wow. and they're acting out one of the first scenes when they, you know, they wake up after their first night in Hamburg. So it's, it's a fascinating time in history as well. Exactly. What was happening in Germany after the Second World War. See, I would be fascinated by this being, uh, I have an undergrad in history. Yeah. Oh, so, right. Uh, okay. so I, is there a way also people can see it on video as well? This or is it only play, like, are you hoping well, this, this continues that you get more time to even, is there any dreams and aspirations as it could go Broadway? Is there, there is there is talk of it. I, I, to be fair, I'm not sure whether it would involve all of us because the the Broadway rules are slightly different uh, in terms of instead of touring. So um, the show may well go to Broadway, but uh, it's kind of uh, a hope at the moment. I haven't heard anything. Well, concrete. I'll keep my fingers crossed, and then it does <laughs> go to Broadway. Well, can I be invited out there? Of course, yeah, to, absolutely. Because I'm only five I'll, hours from New York. I'll speak to the producers and uh, sort you out some tickets. I'm sure they won't mind. Uh, well, let's, <laughs> let's just hope. And then, or, or maybe you can fly me out to London. So, sure. are you, so do you think this is going to continue? Do you think they're going to be a second? Like, I know I, I always hope, I always look at something as interesting as this, as something different that yeah. with the Beatles fans, marketed right, yeah. it could literally go to Broadway. But, however, I think you're hoping for a second run, right? I think so. And the other, there's also been talk of the show going to Australia and even Hamburg itself. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, we had some... Uh, producers in I think to to watch the show when we rehearsed for LA and uh, I know that that was very positive so I believe there's some talks I think it's fair to say talks are in progress about that so so did you do any sing is this a musical with the Beatles stuff or no no, no musical at all involvement I do I do sing but I don't sing in this it's kind of strange that I've done so so uh, were you like singing the tunes from hearing the Beatles all day is it like going through your brain like all your favorite songs were you a fan of the Beatles by the way when you were a kid I I was yeah I used to have watched all the biographies of of all of that time I knew a little bit about that time but I didn't know as much as uh, as much information as is given in the show um, the other thing is the Beatles at that time didn't play Beatles songs. They oh, played, my gosh. They played covers uh, of rock and roll songs, uh, Chuck Berry and stuff like that. So uh, there's, there's three or four Beatles songs in this show, but they come much later as they started writing their own. And there's a scene where they write Love Me Do, or they write Twist and Shout right. and stuff like right, that. Right, right. So, yeah. so as an actor, for yeah. people to follow you, there's yeah. different places, right? Can they go? To, do you, are you on Twitter? Um, yeah, I'm on Twitter and Facebook. What's your Twitter? And... You, the people, uh, especially on the radio show, we interact crazy. And TV, they got to get used to this whole Twitter thing. So, what's your Twitter? <laughs> Twitter is um, Phil Pritchard. Uh, it's at Philly Pritchard. I, I, it's a long, it's a difficult spelling. Okay, but we can Google it and you'll come up. On yeah, Twitter. I'll Google. Yeah. And then, do you have a Facebook fan page? Yes, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any other upcoming projects coming up? Anything else that um, our fans can follow you and different things? And well, possibly. I, I'm just still on holiday for a few more days in in LA, but I'm meeting some agents next week, and I uh, had a lot of interest here in Los Angeles. Nothing I can talk about at the moment, but it's going very well. well so. We're going to have you back on the show for a phoner, and maybe in three months again when we do another one of the on location uh, videos in LA. I'd love to. But I mean, so I will tweet you out. Make sure that. Uh, my team gets your information. Thank it's you. amazing. Thank you, Claire Doden. Thank you, Claire. This is an awesome first interview of, of the interesting <laughs> Thanks, things. Claire. And there's so much more to come. And I, I think, do you do, is it just, do you do any film acting as well? Yes, I, I work with the, the British director, Ken Russell, um, who's, uh, who was famous for his film Women in Love, won an Oscar for Glenda Jackson um, many years ago. And I was fortunate to work with him on one of his last films. Um, uh, it's a film called A Kitten for Hitler, um, which has a oh. very strange plot. Um, <laughs> we can talk about that for hours, too. But, yeah. but, 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 to, we, yeah. but again, for time concerns, we'll, we'll definitely, thanks for coming. I really appreciate it. Thank and you. Why, what, what a great way to get an international audience to start. So thanks for coming by. Thanks for having TV, me. And you're listening to the Total Education Spotlight Show. We'll be back in just a moment.